Welcome back to Biomechanics on Catalyst University. In this video, we're going to do another arthrokinematic movement example problem where we answer this question. In order to improve open chain ankle dorsiflexion, the talus must be mobilized in what direction? Okay. And then we're going to do a similar question, except we're going to do dorsiflexion in the closed chain position. So again, we'll review those terms and understand what they mean. And before you go and start watching this video, I highly recommend you go watch the previous video in this playlist because um, I'm going to, in that video, I will have gone over how we actually do this in a lot more detail. And I'll just make the assumption that you already know a little bit about that. The gist of it is, is if we know the specific movement, so if we're given a question that gives us a specific movement, so for example, open chain ankle dorsiflexion, we can follow this, figure out the direction of the roll, figure out if that should be opposite or the same direction as the slide, and then from there that gives us the direction that we need to mobilize that joint in order to improve the mobility of that particular movement. Okay, So we're doing open chain ankle dorsiflexion. So in this picture right here, uh, uh, dorsiflexion would be if this person pointed their toes up this direction, so this arrow right here. Okay, So basically bending the ankle, flexing it basically, so that your toes point more up toward your, toward your head. Okay? The key here is that the foot is not planted on the ground. Okay? If the foot was planted on the ground and you did a dorsiflexion, that would be like this. And this would be a closed chain ankle dorsiflexion. This is open chain because the foot is not planted. Okay? And so in this case, it really appears like the foot itself is the more mobile of the two components. And you can actually practice this. Go ahead and stick your foot out uh, in the air and perform a dorsiflexion. Okay? Your foot is clearly more mobile than your shin. And specifically, the ankle joint is literally called the tibiotalar joint because it's a joint between the tibia and the talus, which is one of our tarsal bones in the foot. Okay? So we're either going to have to mobilize the tibia or the talus. The question is which bone? Well, we need to determine which one is more mobile and which one's more static. Now, clearly because the foot's going to be more mobile in this case, the talus is going to be the mobile bone, which is why in this question we're going to mobilize the talus, which basically means mobilize the foot, okay? but the talus more specifically. In contrast, the tibia is going to be more static or the less mobile component. Okay. Now, we do need to figure out uh, which one is concave and which one is convex. Okay. Now, if you look at the tibia, the tibia at its distal end down here um, has a plateau, and so the tibia is going to be concave, and then the talus is going to be convex. Okay. And if you need to go review your bony anatomy, go do that. But basically, the idea is we want to form a sentence like blank is moving on a blank. All right. In this case, we're going to be mobilizing the foot or the talus, so it's going to be a convex talus moving on a concave tibia. Think about it. We've got something mobile moving on something static. Convex talus moving on a concave tibia. All right. Now, the key here is that um, from this we can figure out if the roll and the slide are in opposite or same directions. Okay? And the way we figure this out is through convex concave rules. So if we have something convex moving on something concave, the roll and the slide are in opposite directions. If it were the reverse, if it were something concave moving on something convex, roll and slide would be in the same direction. Uh, the way that I remember this is someone told me this, that if you see your X, so X is first, if you see your X coming, you go the opposite direction. So we have a convex talus moving on a concave tibia, so the roll and the slide are going to be in opposite directions. Okay, And so now we have everything we need to figure this question out. We know the specific movement. It's open chain ankle dorsiflexion. Now, uh, this is a little bit more challenging to think about, and you might want to go uh, visit a, a skeleton model to really see this. But what we need to do is figure out that when we do an ankle dorsiflexion, is the talus moving more anteriorly or posteriorly or maybe medial or lateral? Which direction is the talus moving more when we do an open chain dorsiflexion? Well, what you can do to figure this out is if you're standing up, uh, you can basically lift one of your feet off the ground a little bit because it can't be closed chain, right? It has to be open chain. So lift a foot off the ground and then do a dorsiflexion, okay? 
and then even compare it to a plantar flexion. Compare it to a plantar flexion just so you can have some reference because this one's a little tougher. But when you do a dorsiflexion, your talus is actually moving a little bit anteriorly relative to the tibia. Okay, So if I have open chain ankle dorsiflexion, the talus is moving anteriorly. Okay, So the roll is anterior. Remember that the roll okay, is whatever direction the mobile bone moves. So because the talus is going to move more anteriorly in this case, the roll is anterior. Okay. Now for opposite versus same, we've already determined that the roll and the slide are in opposite directions. So if the roll is anterior, the slide must be posterior. And then we're almost done. Okay, the mobilization of the talus, in this case, is always going to be in the same direction as the slide. So because we just determined the slide is posterior, in order to improve open chain ankle dorsiflexion, we'd have to mobilize the talus posteriorly. Okay, So that's a full example right there. Now, we just did that for open chain ankle dorsiflexion. Let's change gears now and do the same thing for closed chain ankle dorsiflexion. So in closed chain ankle dorsiflexion, your foot, whatever, of whatever ankle is dorsiflexing, you're having it planted on the ground. And so what this person is actually doing right here, where maybe their tibia was directly vertical at first, and then they moved their tibia anteriorly over a planted foot, and now they have this situation. And if you look, now we have our ankle dorsiflexed. Okay, but the situation here is actually reversed because let's think about this. Um, if we go from a vertical position of the tibia to now where the tibia is uh, like this, is the talus still the mobile part? Well, the talus is part of the foot and the foot's not really moving. So actually in this case, the talus is the static or less mobile component and then the tibia is more mobile. Okay, now the convex and concave parts haven't changed. The talus is still convex and the tibia is still concave. But now it's a concave tibia moving on a convex talus. Makes sense? The tibia is mobile when the foot is planted on the ground. So now we have a concave tibia moving on a convex talus. Now we need to determine the directions of roll and slide. Are they opposite or the same? Well, now we have something concave moving on something convex. Um, since concave is first, it's the same. Okay, It's the same. And one of the other ways you can remember this is between the words convex and concave. Concave is the only of the two words that has two of the same letter, has two Cs. So two of the same letter, if concave comes first, it's same direction. Whereas if convex is first, you don't want to see your X, so you go in the opposite direction. All right, so concave uh, tibia moving on a convex talus, roll and slide are in the same direction. All right, now we can go back to this flow chart right here, and we have everything we need. So we know the specific movement. It's closed chain ankle dorsiflexion, and the tibia is the mobile bone. Now, I think it's pretty simple, right here at least, to see that if you start with the tibia in a vertical position and you kind of lunge forward, it's pretty clear that your tibia is moving anteriorly. Okay, It's moving anteriorly. So that means the roll is anterior because the roll is always in the same direction that the mobile bone moves. So roll is anterior. Well, we just determined that the roll and the slide are now actually in the same direction. So if the roll's anterior, the slide is also anterior, and then the mobilization is always in the same direction as the slide, so we'd have to mobilize the tibia anteriorly. And the reason I did uh, these two questions right here is because you can see actually a couple different things. One, um, if we have open chain ankle dorsiflexion, the talus is mobile and the talus has to be mobilized. But it is mobilized in the opposite direction as the roll. Whereas here in closed chain ankle dorsiflexion, now the foot is planted and the tibia is the mobile bone and we actually mobilize it in the same direction as the roll. Okay, so changing something from open chain to closed chain or vice versa can change a lot about the way you would actually mobilize that particular joint. Okay, but theoretically, again to regroup, if we have open chain ankle dorsiflexion, to improve that we would mobilize the talus posteriorly, whereas in closed chain ankle dorsiflexion we'd have to mobilize the tibia anteriorly.
And we could even say on this question, okay, if we had open chain plantar flexion, open chain plantar flexion, the antagonistic movement, the talus would be mobilized anteriorly, okay, because it would be in the opposite direction for the antagonistic movement, assuming the open chain is the same. In the next video, we're going to go the opposite direction. We're going to be given a direction of mobilization or told a direction of mobilization, and we're going to have to predict then the specific movement that's trying to be restored or improved. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.